face. You're going to have an encounter with the Lord. God's going to meet you where you are in that place. And he said, come down. I'm coming to your house. That's what Jesus told Zacchaeus. Come on down out of the tree. I'm coming to your house. And the Bible says he hurried up. That's what make haste means. He hurried up and came down out of that tree. And we don't hear any of the, about any of the conversation that went on between Jesus and Zacchaeus. And that's so important because some of the things that are hindrances and stopping us from launching forth into the things of God, all of what I've said to you today, the reasons for that inability to connect with the purpose of God, the reason that stops us from really getting past our selfishness, the reasons that keep us focusing on our inabilities and our hurt, that's what Jesus dealt with secretly with Zacchaeus. He didn't expose none of his pain. He didn't expose none of his dirt. He didn't expose none of his problems, none of his issues. And I don't know what kinds of people and ministries and things that you've been around and that you've experienced, but I'm telling you, God says it's a different day. You're going to have a Zacchaeus experience where it's just between you and the Lord. So you can say, okay, Lord, I really do, I really do want your purpose, but Lord, and something inside of me gets afraid when I have to submit like that because, God, you know I trusted like that before I got burned. Lord, I believed, I thought I was believing a vision and a plan like that before, and I got hurt. I got wounded. So, God, I need you to deal with this wounded place inside of me that makes it hard for me to believe and to trust to come down out of the tree. Because every time I come down, every time I humble myself and I come down and I try to believe, and I've seen that in the year that we've been here, where there have been so many people where it's like, I'm tired of putting my trust out there only to get hurt one more time. But I've noticed a resilience here in this community like nothing I've seen before. Because I come from a community, you shake my shake, and she's shaking her head. Because like, you burn me once, that ain't happening more, no more. That's it, that's it. But I've seen a resilience here where people just keep trying. Just, it's almost like, they stick their foot out and test the world one more time. One more time. I see a lot of, I see that in the spirit. I see a lot of people sticking their toe in the water. Let me see, just one more. Maybe this is it. Maybe one more time. Maybe. At least, they at least keep coming back to the pool's edge. One more time. Yeah, let me see. Now, I'm not going to be one of those preachers that's going to come up behind you and push you in. <laughs> But I am telling you that it's you're to the place where Jesus was with Zacchaeus. And that is, Jesus is saying, not Pastor Chris, Jesus, the Lord and Holy Spirit is speaking. He said, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I'm coming into your house. And we're going to deal with this personally. It's not going to be a public display. This isn't about putting on a show. That's why I don't like performance and all that kind of stuff. I've tried intentionally throughout this entire meeting today to not give you a performance and a show. Many of you, you're tired of that. You're tired of shows and performance. You want to know what's real. And so here in this final moment, come on, let's just bow your head before the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we want you. Lord, you said you would come to our house. <laughs> and so, Lord God, come on, you, you have to put your own words on it in this part of the meeting. I can't tell you the words to say. I can't give you the expression. But you know personally uh, what's necessary. God, I want you to speak to me. We started off with this at the very beginning of this day. Singing a little song said, listen to his voice, hear his call. And so right now, here in these few moments, just let the Lord show you the thing, the issue. that constantly keeps pulling you back. It's almost like a bungee cord. Does that make sense? You, re you stretch away from it so far, but it always seems to snap you back. Whatever that issue is, or the issues, the many things that constantly pull you back. It may be a past sin. It may be a major failure that you had in your life. 
Is that we're afraid if anybody ever finds out about you or your past. Come on, let the Lord speak to you. Thank you, Lord God. You're not in a place of condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Whatever the failure is, thank you, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit, let God just speak to you and tell you, no, it's not, that, that's not going to be an issue. It's not an issue to the Lord. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. There may be some mistakes that you've made. There, I may be talking to people here who are divorced or separated. There may be those of you that, uh, there may be things that are happening inside your physical body. You don't want anybody to know. Yes, Lord God. Come on, don't, come on, let Jesus come into your house today. Thank you, Lord God. There's conversation that he wants to bring to you personally. There's healing that is for you personally. Thank you, Lord. There is deliverance that is very personal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for touching hearts and homes and lives today. And I do speak your words that salvation, deliverance has come to this house. And the shame that held you back, it is broken off of you. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, for those that are in this room and uh, there is a stigma. You know what I mean by that word. There is a negative stigma that is on them. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. I just keep hearing these words, and I'm not bringing these things up. I'm not saying these things to embarrass you or to condemn you, but it's been a stigma. Those of you who you may have been married before, you may be on your second marriage or your third marriage, and there's a stigma. People look at you strange and funny. We break that now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. This negative stigma that is on you as a single parent. We break it now. That's religion, y'all. That ain't where God looks at you. Yes, Lord. He doesn't call you unaccepted in the house of God. My Lord God, we break that off of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're in an area in a community. Uh, where there are a lot of people that are dealing with HIV and AIDS, and they're in the house of God. Yes, Lord God, but the church has had such a big struggle with that. And I'm telling you, we break the negative stigma off of your life. You are accepted and loved. You belong in the house of God. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Somebody may be struggling with your sexuality. You have tendencies. Oh yes, Lord. Come on, let God deal with you. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Oh, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. My Lord, my God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for your healing. Lord, I thank you for healing where words have been spoken. I see daggers and knives and spears that have been shot into some of you yes lord from across pulpits and in conversations on jobs yes lord you've been there have been knives stabbed in your back because just because of who you are your ethnicity and my lord god what we but the lord is here right now Thank you, Lord God. He's here to, first of all, to remove. Yes, Lord God. Some of you, it's almost like you've been walking around with this knife in your back, but the Holy Spirit, he's taking it out right now, and he's putting in the oil, the medicine to heal that place. My Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Just receive it right. It's between you and the Lord. That's why I ain't pointing nobody out. I'm not having you to stand or nothing because that's how the Lord did with Zacchaeus. It was very personal. Yes, Lord God. The only way anybody going to know is if you tell it. If one day you decide to testify and talk about it, that's the only way it'll be out there. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. That's how personal God is. That's how wonderful he is. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord God. Lord, you see the places. There are young ladies that are in here, Lord God, and uh, way back in their past, it may even be happening now, Lord God, there is molestation, there is assaults that has come up against them. Lord God, yes, Lord God, Lord, I thank you for healing that broken place, that wounded place, the things they hadn't been able to tell anybody. My God, yes, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for healing that place. You may even be older now, and there are things that are in the past that you never talked about. You've held it in and suppressed it. Yes, Lord God, and sometimes people don't understand why you don't like people getting in your space. They don't understand why there are times when you just don't feel like being bothered, and you don't want nobody touching you, and they just call you moody and all those kinds of things, but they don't know what happened. Thank you, Lord God. But the Lord is here right now. He is touching that sensitive, that hurting place right now. Thank you, Lord. My God. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Lord, for those that are in this room that have been through emotional and mental trauma, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. You may even be on medication for it, but don't you dare be embarrassed. Yes, Lord God. This is a place of safety for you. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God understands the way that our human brains were made to function and things that were supposed to happen. You may be experiencing chemical imbalances, maybe because of diet, maybe because of traumatic experiences. But the Lord, he is here right now to tell you, no, you're not crazy. And no, you're not going to lose it. No, you're not going to go in the way of your mother and of your grandmother and of your great grandmother. No, it's a different season now. Yes, Lord. Lord God, my Lord God, it's a different season now. Yeah, that generational curse stops with you and your generation. Your sons and daughters will not suffer with mental disorders and serious mood swings. And my Lord God, yes, Lord God, several of the women here, you've had female disorders and your cycle's been out of order and out of whack. You, my Lord God. Yes, Lord God. And it's caused all kinds of things to happen in you. But the Lord does break. He breaks the cycle. He breaks the curse of the enemy upon your body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Yes, Lord God. God's even given me now to speak to the curse of poverty. Every time opportunities have come, it seems like you've been right on the brink of a, of a, of a job or even of a promotion. It seems like something always goes wrong just when you're at the moment of breakthrough. Yes, Lord God. But the Lord, he breaks the cycle of poverty off of your life. The enemy will know, yeah, he will not be able to keep you held back from the purpose of God. That's why I spoke these things forth. Yes, Lord, your daddy has tons available for you. Tons already worked, set up and laid up for you. My Lord God. Yes, Lord, so we break the curse of poverty. Come on, you, and here's how you break it. Lord, I receive your purpose for my life. Yes, Lord, because nothing can stop your purpose. Yes, Lord God, I receive your plans for my life. Yes, Lord God. Only thing that keeps the, poverty, the curse of poverty going is if we hold on to our own plans. If you hold on to your own purpose. But the moment you embrace the purpose of God, don't you understand that when the children of Israel were marching forth with the purpose of God, the, the nation of Egypt could not hold them back. Yes, Lord God. The Red Sea could not stop the purpose of God. Yes, Lord God, even being in the desert with no food and no water, nothing could stop the purpose of God. So, Lord, we, inv we yeah, come on, just tell Lord, I receive your purpose, your plans already laid out for my life. I receive it now. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. We magnify you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. God's doing something so deep and personal in here. My Lord. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I don't know what it is. God just telling me to tell all of the men in here, all of the men, all of the men. Yes, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for provision. I'm just saying this to all of the men. I don't know all of your situations. Yes, Lord God. But I speak provision, abundance and provision for you. Yes, Lord God. Yes, I know we live in a world. Sisters, you may not understand this because of all of the messages that keep going forth in the world that keep making it seem like everything's being dominated by men. But most of us men, we are really struggling just to make it and to take care of our families. 
And what they do is they keep talking about the statistics about the small percentage of men who do make more than women and they're doing better than women, but the majority of us are just barely struggling to make it. Yes, Lord God. And so there are opportunities that have now been shut down to us. And so we find ourselves in dead end jobs and cut off and not able to get anywhere. Yes, Lord God. So men, I speak over your life. Breakthrough. Lord, I break the ceiling. Yes, Lord God, the limitation that has been set upon the brothers, upon the fathers, upon the husbands. Thank you, Lord God. I don't say this to speak against you, sisters, but I just, God told me to direct this to the men right. Thank you, Lord God, because there are so many. They want to take the rightful place in the home. Yes, Lord God. See, that's why there's that double message. There are women who are saying they want men to step up and take their rightful place, but the ones who tried to do it were cut down. Yes, Lord God. So, Lord God, I thank you. Come on, men, just lift your hands with me. Lord, I received your provision, your power. Yes, Lord God, your purpose so that I can take my rightful place, so that I can provide. Yes, Lord God, for my family. Yes, Lord God, thank you, Lord, so that I can be a godly husband, a godly father. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Help me, Lord God, to lead, to lead to lead even as you lead me help me to lead in the name of Jesus thank you Lord wow 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 thank you Lord and I declare over your lives it's my final one as Jesus, just as Jesus said it over Zacchaeus salvation has come to this house that word salvation means deliverance and preser preservation so not only are you delivered but God will keep that which he has promised. Yes, Lord God. Lord God, thank you, Lord God. So just lift your hands, everybody with me, to the Lord. Lord, we receive. Thank you, Lord. He's not talking about salvation of soul right now. He's talking about salvation of your whole life. Thank you, Lord God. We receive it. We thank you, Lord God. Salvation has come to my house. Yes, Lord. And the things that have held me back all of these years, no longer, oh my God, no longer, you ain't he, you're not holding us back. You're not keeping me bound. Yes, Lord, I'm walking in the purpose of God. I'm in the purpose of God. Yes, Lord God. We, oh, we bless your name. In Jesus' name, we declare it. We declare it. Yes, Lord. Amen. And amen. Come on, celebrate what God has done in this place. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord.